This episode of Saga Thursday is brought to you by the Red Beard Baron channel right here on YouTube. This channel is loaded with realistic terrain tutorials that would be just perfect for any Saga battlefield. After our Britain's discussion, make sure to head on over and check it out. Hello friends, welcome to Saga Thursday, your regular source for that sweet Saga content. I'm your host, Raj. Today, well, it's always a special episode, but today's an extra special episode. We're joined with the, the Red Beard Baron himself, uh, who has a fine YouTube channel talking terrain and hobby projects and stuff like that. Well, he's going to come on, talk about the Atheist and Arthur Britons with us today. How are you good, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here talking some new edition of Saga. Yeah. Uh, as I said, it's a it's a great new edition. I think it streamlined it well, and especially I think the Britons have benefited from the new changes quite a bit. They're a pretty strong faction in this new edition. Yeah, I think the the Britons are very cool. I did get to play them, and I, I think out of Atheist and Arthur, I would say this is probably the faction that I see the most probably it just captures people imagination more more than the others um, right if you get I to play as arthur <laughs> yeah essentially <laughs> so so do you want to just go we didn't clarify ahead of time so i just go by beard baron i i i believe i that. believe i know your name yeah the secret <laughs> well, it might be yeah it's a tongue twister <laughs> after you say it too many times <laughs> yeah red beard, red beard, bear. Red beard bear. Okay, so cool. Matt, thank you for joining us no and problem. responding when I, I reached out for this collaboration here. So we've seen your models on your channel here, your uh -huh. buttons, you know, sprinkled throughout your terrain pieces, adding that uh, extra layer of uh, ambiance. Is there a uh, can can you send me some pics of those guys so I can put yeah, them in the video definitely. here? And then is there like a web page or something where people uh, can go out? That, I'm that really exists? bad at it. <laughs> that, I have a Facebook fine. page. I was gonna upload stuff and I, I never have. So yeah, I can send you definitely send you some pics of those guys. Definitely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, just head to the channel, and we'll probably talk about that at the end here. Okay. But let's get in to the the Britons here then. So Atheist and Arthur, long overdue. Sad to say, I haven't really touched on it since the, the channel began too much. This is the first review of right. one of those factions. Kind of came at a weird a weird time, the last of the first edition books. A lot of people didn't know where the game was necessarily going. You know, was it mm -hmm. kind of done? And like right. this is the last uh, little fart in the wind. Or right. But it was uh, the precursor to second edition, so people got back in and then Obviously, these guys are compatible. They said that it was designed with the new edition in mind. Right. Um, so, and I think the Britons are probably a faction that are aren't really hit or really changed with the second edition. We kind of not really about at all. That. Yeah. Except for side by side, losing side by side was oh yeah kind of a big deal for your warlord, but they made up for it in other places. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, and I actually have the. Uh, I've got this this little guy right here. Oh, okay. I actually, had, I went. I, I was making a gripping beast order, so I actually have. Uh -huh. There's like a, there's like a new version of the battle boards that just remove reference to the old language. So, right. Do you have the the original battle boards? I have the I have the good old original ones. So. <laughs> okay. Well, that kind of looks similar to mine, but maybe I have that one too. I don't. I don't know. Maybe they they just look really similar, but. Um, I guess we'll find out as we go along here. Yeah, but... I think I think what they said is like I mean you could just get stickers to put over the original, so they have to be nearly identical, I think. Mm -hmm. Especially the Britons, they don't have any cavalry or anything, so they're not telling you to go to you know the whatever uh, the crop the cross book. Right? But the the new uh, ATS and Arthur, if you pick it up, it will have the new battle boards, and then I actually have this little thing which I reference which actually just has all the clarifications and stuff okay, so for cool. Britons it's just essentially two lines here the Britons kind of had a special heroic union the heroic unit the companions so it just you know it had uh, six or seven paragraphs of rules it just says hey yeah it's a his it's a heroic unit which we've added to right. the main rules right know, so 
Uh, and then it just also clarifies that Arthur has a melee aggression of 10, mm -hmm. which that sounds pretty, pretty good. good. I don't yeah, know what else bad. he does. But, um, <laughs> he does I'm some crazy stuff. He's good. Um, so, yeah, why don't we get into the troop types? Yeah. So we know exactly what we're dealing with. So Definitely. we are the... <laughs> The Britons here. So the warlord, he's mounted. He looks like you could also take him on foot if you, if you wanted. Yeah, I, I often do take him on foot. Uh, being galvanized is everything for this army. So you want your guys really clumped up, close together. Unless you're playing Arthur. We'll talk about Arthur. Arthur completely changes the way the faction plays. But for your normal uh, run-of-the-mill six-point list that doesn't have Arthur, I'm, I'm taking him on foot. Okay, interesting. So uh, hearth guards then can be mounted or on foot so are you usually taking your probably the companions but then probably the rest of them on foot or do you like to mix it up yeah i take them all on foot all on foot and yeah for uh at least for the non-heroic arthur builds you you always want those companions because they increase the range of your galvanized and if you don't have all of your units galvanized, you're not going to be performing that well. That's one thing I learned. If you don't just want your hearth guard galvanized, you want everybody. So, okay, you want those companions. So, yeah, I referenced it previously, but so essentially, you can take two hearth guard models and form them up with your warlord, essentially to form a little unit of uh, his chosen uh, battle brothers. And then, so galvanized. Can you explain galvanized? For yeah. So I guess it's like it's the idea that your your warlord is kind of uh, in this army is going to be the center. There's not there's not going to be very many. Um, on, if you look at the battle board, battle board, not very many attack abilities. It's mostly defensive things, and really your only offense comes from your warlord. So the galvanized, the idea, of, I guess your warlord is really inspirational. So as long as mm -hmm. your units are very short away from your warlord or his companions they get extra abilities on the on the battle board so you'll see uh, as we go through it s some abilities are weaker if the units aren't galvanized whereas if they're closer to the warlord they get extra attacks extra defense things like that mm -hmm. yeah so essentially if a unit is really close within very short to your warlord they're going to get some buffs it doesn't do anything in of and of itself, but no. uh, that the battle board abilities will specifically mention that it, uh, activate a galvanized unit, for example. Right. So yeah, interesting there. I love the choice of, of language, galvanized. Right. I'm curious what it was in like the original French. Probably a more <laughs> elegant word. I, right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the term too. It's a little out there. Okay, so uh, warriors on foot, just your regular uh, guys, nothing special, no shooters or mounted guys, and your levies can have slings or bows or javelins, so really the whole gamut there. Do you, have you added some levies with the, the second edition? I, yeah. I've tried, um, you know, I just don't, you know, they don't really have any other than some defensive abilities. There's nothing really that's tailored to them. I guess if you're, if you know you're fighting really cavalry heavy lists, I might take a point of it, but not really, uh, because as again, the galvanized, um, ability or the, or the galvanized trait seems really lend itself to melee, not really shooting. So by taking mm -hmm. a shooting unit, you're I think you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. But again, I don't know. Maybe a competitive play, it'd be different. But uh, as far as what I've seen, there's no really reason to take them. Okay. Yeah, well, we can keep keep that in mind as we go through here. But um, yeah, a lot of the times, the levies, you know, unless you have something special with your board, they take the uncommons and rares that you would use for sweet abilities right. just to activate these kind of pathetic guys <laughs> right. on, on their own. So uh, you got to have a plan in mind. Yeah, so. I mean, it would be interesting with all these defensive abilities that the Britons have. You could be chucking levies with an armor of five or six at people, you know, which might be interesting, but I haven't I haven't tried that out too much. <laughs> yeah, and I think the, the javelin levies uh, are always the most interesting uh, thing with the new addition there because armor four and just having a lot of bodies right. for people to go through Right. It makes yeah, them kind of particularly useful. So, well, let's get into that All right. delightful battle board here. So, I'm looking up top. It looks 
like pretty standard affair up there for the activations and the activation pool, combat pool. I'm not seeing anything unusual. Can you confirm that? Nope, nothing, nothing unusual. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're playing the Britons, you're likely going to have less dice than your opponent because of the whole companion thing. Uh, you're going to uh, usually have to run two companions and then a unit of six Hearthguard. Um, so you're going to be using the activation pool ability constantly. And uh, as we're going to see, the, the rarest dice for the Britons isn't actually all that crucial. So you're going to be spending those rare dice a lot on the on the activation pool. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting point. So it kind of works with uh, the Irish, their heroes. If you take two, you still need to form a legal unit. Otherwise, you're just going to like trash those two hearth guard. So you have eight hearth guard, but you're only going to generate one saga die from the eight hearth guard. Uh, versus you could run them as two units of four. Um, and, and I meant to oh, say six hearth guard because the right. other two are gl uh, glummed on with the warlord there. So yeah, it kind of lock, locks you into that for mm -hmm. sure. Now I, if you take I, Arthur, it changes it oh, completely. Okay. So we'll talk about Arthur, but Arthur, man, he's he's a beast. He's he's uh, he's often how I play the Britons, but he, but he he kind of changes all of this. Uh, the, the, he, he doesn't take companions, and you don't have to worry much about dice because he generates two dice and all that, but for your standard army, yeah. He does his thing, okay. So I'm just going to get into the abilities then. We're going to start out with Duke Spalorum, Duck Spalorum. This is an activation ability, uses any of the Roman dice there. Your warlord may be activated as many times as you wish until he is exhausted, or you activate another unit. So this... I've been on the receiving end of this, this one <laughs> yeah. right here. So this ability is pretty pretty amazing oh, yeah. if you think about um, just using a common die on it. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, it's going to let you have free reign with the Warlord. So he talked about the Warlord doing the killing oh, previously. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I know there's going to be some abilities that will time into this, but mm -hmm. activate it as many times as you wish. So that's huge because... Um, Essentially, they need to let you do whatever you want <laughs> until you exhaust yourself. Because if they use your fatigues to uh, weaken your attacks, you're just going to keep coming in. Um, now, there's probably a time and a place, depending on your abilities, uh, when to use that fatigue, maybe. And just take the additional attacks. But you can just he's the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going. Uh, and Thank he's you. a... So, of course, he's going to have the extra... Uh, Hearthguard guys on top of this, so it's not mm -hmm. just him. So he's an unusually fighty warlord. Going to mm -hmm. have uh, 12 attacks out the gate. So, yeah, this is a, a, a great ability. Do you kind of... Uh, the person that I played, it seemed like he built his phase or, or battle plan around this ability. Is that what will you do, or you run it kind of differently? I kind of run it... I, it's more situational. I definitely use okay. it every game. But what I tend to do is I tend to hold my Warlord, when I'm not playing Arthur, I tend to hold my Warlord back a little bit, and uh, I kind of use him as a counter puncher. So with, uh, I usually go on foot, and I, and I usually do not charge you. I make you charge me. And then uh, if you take uh, the challenge mixed with Duke's Ballorum and Pendragon, you can start just out of nowhere, your warlord can come out and just start wrecking people. And uh, Duke's Balorum especially is good for, uh, you know, if you're if you're playing Clash of Warlords, you can surprise them by uh, doing some shenanigans, obliterating their opposing hearth guard, and, and run right into the warlord and take them out. So uh, yeah, I, I use it situationally. I, I try and bait my opponent to bring his his warlord close to mine, and then you can really bring the pain with that that ability. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, nice way to start off the battle board here. Uh -huh. You want to pop down to impenetrable defense there? Yeah. So all enemy units engaged with your unit must reroll successful attack rolls during step four of the melee. So this is a this is a very nice ability. It's a kind of I, I it's it's showing you where the I guess the mentality of the Britons are. They're going to be really hard to kill. If you're into 40k, I see the Britons as like the Nurgle of 
you know, of uh, of Saga. Like, uh, they're kind of frustrating to play. A lot, a, lot, a lot of times you get your opponent swearing because they think they have you, and then you, you have them re-roll your dice or your or your uh, warriors have an armor of six and they can't kill you. So this is just starting off what's going to be a long slog for your opponent. So I, I try to pop this usually on... Uh, I always try and use this on my if I'm my hearth guards fighting, you know, to keep them alive for the late game. Don't usually waste on warriors or anything like that, but it, it's useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so two dice. Yeah, one of them is uh, rare, but I think this is a really great defensive ability. Um, mm -hmm. I would probably take this over any ability I've gone <laughs> through as far as defense <laughs> abilities that that I've reviewed. Um, yeah, reroll rerolls are huge. Um, usually, you just very, you see it quite rarely, uh, and you get to reroll your attack. So this, this is very unusual for Saga to make, force your opponent to reroll successful attack rolls. And you know, the higher your armor, the more essentially impenetrable your defense will be. <laughs> and it can be very demoralizing <laughs> uh -huh. for your opponent, definitely. Yeah, it's really gonna. I mean, this. No matter how many abilities they stack. This is really going to shut it down oh, yeah. um, harder than most most any other defense ability that you can get out there. So, yeah, that's that's a great ability, and it has lots of synergies too. So yeah, we're kind of talking yeah. about it defensively, but right. um, you can absolutely use this on the charge mm -hmm. as you go in. And yeah, I think and, I must have the old board here because it says all enemy units engaged in uh, and the mm -hmm. new edition, you would not be able to have multiple units because Right, that's of, true. Like, no side by side. side. Thing there. So okay, we'll see. But you take this with steel wall and uh, and if your unit's galvanized, not only do they re-roll that, but then their first hit through is cancelled. So I, I usually I'll I'll use those two in tandem. So not only are you am I re-rolling everything then I get one free hit off of you too. So, you know, mm -hmm. you can go in and not lose anybody in a combat, which is nice. Yeah, you can definitely uh, see your way through it here. Uh, I'm going to pop down a pen dragon here. Okay. This is another melee ability, and this is the one that you referenced. Uncommon or rare dice, your warlord may reroll re all attack dice, resulting in a one or two. If you do use the rare, your warlord immediately immediately removes a fatigue. So, yeah, this is a great ability. I talked about the re-rolls here. Um, one or two, that covers a lot of the gamut there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, with fatigue, using the enemy's fatigue, you could generally get them down to a three or a four. So essentially, it's re-rolling your attack dice. Exactly. <laughs> in most situations where you can line that up. So uh, for just the single dice, that's that's pretty damn good. I'm thinking of Uller's two dice. I'm sure there's other reroll abilities out there, um, right. but they're kind of pricey. And for the rare, get that uh, fatigue removal on top of it. Can't yeah. can't complain about that. And exactly. uh, that's kind of doubly nasty with Dux Valorum because that'll get you uh, potentially an extra activation or something like that to extend your kind of hit streak. Oh yeah. And usually your opponents, if they haven't played you before, they don't expect you to just keep coming with your uh, with your leader. They think you're going to stop after you get that one fatigue. You're not going <laughs> to risk it, but then you come at Pendragon, you get that fatigue off, and they have a fresh Warlord in their face. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's really nasty. Yeah, that is, that is usually how Saga works. Get the Warlord in, <laughs> do your stuff, and then get them, get them back. And right. Once is enough, we're done here. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, cool. Great, great ability. Um, oh, yeah. You want to do no pity there? Sure, no pity. Your unit receives a plus one hit against all engaged enemy units. So I guess just one unit with the change in, in the new uh, version. If your unit is galvanized, the enemy units must discard their first successful defense dice. So it's it's about as offensive as uh, as we'll get on uh, the Britain board, but it's it's a useful ability. You know, uh, helmets are are common, so mm -hmm. um, if I, I'll, I'll use this pretty frequently. I don't think it's a must-have, must-take when you're going into a combat, but having uh, that plus one helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for two dice, that's going to be uh, generally pretty tough to, to work them in 
mm -hmm. uh, especially for commons, because uh, you'd right. be wanting to use those to activate your lads if you can. But de decent ability, plus one to mm -hmm. hit. I guess, how does that combo with Pendragon? Then does it modify? Your yeah. Dice? Does it like work against you because a two would turn into a three? Um, so yeah, as far as with Pendrag, yeah, so I guess. Interesting thought experiment. Yeah, I, I don't really, I've never really used those together because with with uh, Pendragon, if you're using it with your Warlord, you're pretty much rerolling it pretty much everything anyways. Yeah. But yeah, that, would, that I guess would really ensure like if you're going up against uh, a hearthguard, hearthguard unit, you know, you could really put on the yeah. pain with it. But well, yeah, yeah. you probably you probably wouldn't combo those. So and this would be for uh, that six pack of hearthguard, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. Want to use that or your warriors? Something you know, I, like that. I do find I use it. I use it quite a bit. So it's not like one of those just really situational things. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, there's definitely more areas. More, I think more brutal areas on the board, but it's it's a nice inclusion to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that galvanize ability is pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty easy if someone close ranks to get that four plus defensive dice, right. so just knocking one of those out the gate mm -hmm. uh, is pretty, pretty nice there. So, okay. Well, I'm gonna head up to Britannia with All an right. exclamation point. I like it when they add some punctuation to these abilities. <laughs> it's not, not common, but uh, you, we do get some of that. This is a activation, uses the uncommon. Activate a galvanized unit, so a unit that is within very short of the warlord. So is the warlord himself galvanized? Yes. He yep. is. So, so this he is always used. galvanized. Mm -hmm. He is 100% galvanized. If they engage in melee, they gain three extra attack dice during step three and are considered galvanized. So maybe since they may be charged out of yes. range of the warlord. Okay, so that's a pretty good point because <laughs> so just starting within very short may not, might not be good enough. You have to end or uh, engage in combat within very short of your warlord. Got it. So usually what I do, so when you're playing the Britons and you're not using Arthur, because Arthur does this cool thing where everyone's galvanized and they don't have to be very short. Okay, that's but with, pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty insane. And, and uh, uh, But for normal armies, the thing about the Britons is you have to be very careful about your positioning. So I will always, I'll pretty much do Britannia every every turn. And what I'll usually do is I'll have my hearth guard standing in front of my warlord, and I'll use this to move them forward. And then I'll move my warlord behind him and then move everybody up. Otherwise, you know, if you move someone out of out of range or if you attack and and you're not within very short you're you're not going to do very well in the combat so mm -hmm. i use this constantly this ability yeah so extra extra attack dice i'm looking here that doesn't look like there's well, maybe one other ability that gets you attack dice so yeah. for the most part you're using the attack dice that you inherently generate so right. this gives you a little extra something and gives you that galvanize ability so right. yeah it's kind of Wow, yeah, it does focus a lot around the Warlord because I'm sure there's probably times then where you move your Warlord up so the unit that you charge with next will end next to them to be galvanized. Right. So, wow, yeah, a lot to consider there Yeah. with the big guy. So, okay, yeah, decent ability, uncommon dice. Uh, I guess maybe that's, that's fair for... Uh, uncommon dice. Some boards you can get a little bit more juice out of there. Right. It does have that galvanized uh, yeah. extra ability there. But then it, it is limited to mm -hmm. the galvanized unit at the right. start. So, so, yeah, so yeah, that's why, again, you are keeping your Britons real clumped together, which yeah. is kind of interesting as someone who, like, you know, my entire YouTube channel is about building terrain. I hate terrain when I play <laughs> as the Britons because it yeah. is it is your worst nightmare to get your guys separated. So that's a key. If you're playing the Britons, try to get your guys around some terrain, make them uh, have to separate, and uh, that that's about the only way you can take on the the Britons head to head. I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what base size is your warlord on? I have them on a on a fifty. A fifty, yeah, uh, went, yeah. Went big. Yeah, I'm surprised. So if you if you took the calf. 
you could get that even a little bit bigger and then your other guys are a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. Is that, have you found that tantalizing? Uh, you know, I've, I've what, thought about it, but whenever I bring Cav, I just won't play Arthur as Arthur. Because <laughs> Arthur, we'll get to it, but Arthur's crazy good. I, I, I think in the previous edition, he was even kind of overpowered. Uh, but uh, this edition, he's just so strong. So most of the time when I play as the Britons now, I'm only, I'm only playing as Arthur. Uh, he's got to live up to the legend. Oh, he and does. He oh, he does. He can't be one of those special character duds. Uh-huh. So, okay. Well, do you want to do challenge? That's the sure. one you talked about with Pendragon and Dux Ballorum in a kind of a combo. Yeah, so uh, use this ability when an enemy unit is activated for a movement, but before the activation is resolved. The activated unit must engage your warlord. If unable to, this ability has no effect. So this thing, uh, I love this. I, I I have, I think, won more games of Saga with this ability than any other. So, you know, again, using positions kind of, uh, I don't know, cleverly, you can leave a little gap in your lines mm-hmm. that will allow you to uh, to bring in the suckers that are advancing upon your line, and you can uh, you can really surprise, especially enemy Hearthguard. And all of a sudden, they think they're going up uh, against a unit of warriors or something, and boom, they're fighting your warlord and his companions, and you're re-rolling ones and twos, and it gets out of hand pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Now... This one is interesting. It looks like, to me, like this would have been one that would have been uh, updated for the FAC or uh, with with the new edition there because in the old edition, a movement could engage or it could just be a movement. Mm -hmm. Um, Do do you know that if this was updated Um, to, to to a charge activation? That's kind of what I'm thinking it would be. Facts, I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I guess every time I've used it, I've only used it against people charging me. Um, Okay. Yeah, and I I apologize. I grabbed the wrong board, and uh, once I'm kind of uh, locked into (laughs) this recording, oh no, you're good. Space, I I am locked in, so I cannot grab it, unfortunately. So uh, I would think it would. Yeah, I think it makes sense that it'd have to be a charge, right? Like uh, otherwise, if someone's just moving around, that seems a little. Yeah, uh, because this kind of plays off. The um, the old warlords kind of have to engage each other, and right. that was always a movement activation. And with the new addition, that changed to if a charge activation is uh, you know declared, then you have to charge the enemy warlord, but you could just move away. So it really, um, so I'm guessing that that might have changed to that. I guess I'll I'll post I'll, I'll post the. A note below in the comments just okay. confirming that one way or the other for the folks yeah. who are watching I apologize thought I had the new board here that would just have that verbiage if it was on there so, yeah I think that would make sense um, but yeah so interesting Billy so you're gonna have your battle line here and you got your world already sticking out just a little bit there and everybody's clumped up so if they want to charge one of your units that are clumped up there, your warlord is going to be in range, most likely. Um, they would have to essentially uh, spend an extra activation, most likely, to uh, put put out their little measuring stick and uh, make sure they're out of range of the warlord and mm-hmm. in range of the unit they want to charge. So even if they do that, you've kind of succeeded uh, mm-hmm. in having them spend dice to, to accomplish that, maybe getting extra fatigue on them before they go in. So uh, just an ability that you know you might not actually get to spend it, but just having it on there can change how, how they yeah. play. And uh, it, it's definitely, I, the Britons I think are a very risky faction. I, I, Ooh, I most like of the time I lose with the <laughs> Britons, it's because I get overconfident with all my Warlord abilities. Like uh, recently, my, in my last game in fact, I, I used Challenge and I obliterated a unit, my opponent's unit of Hearthguard, and he had another unit of Hearthguard right behind that. So then I, I popped Duke's Blorum, and I just went straight at him. And I ended up, he ended up getting, I mean, I ended up wiping out both units, but he ended up getting like, I don't know, eight hits on me, and I rolled horrible. I rolled all ones and twos, lost all my companions, Warlord died. And, you know, so that'll happen with, with, with this play style. Every once in a while, you're going to just roll bad and your Warlord's going to die real quick. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. that's a good point. So you have the the companion, you got these extra wounds there. So you're like, wow, well, 
things right. things don't turn out. I got got some extra guy. You know, we'll be ah, we'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, I think you just get overconfident. <laughs> go through. Uh, okay, cool. Well, very cool ability. Mm -hmm. Uncommon or rare for that one. So yeah, it looks like the uncommons are some hot business here for Bottom. you. Yeah, because um, the next one down, stubborn, is another uncommon. And I'll just get into that. So melee, gain two defense dice. If you're galvanized, you gain two attack dice as well. So if you are if you are galvanized, you're getting a pretty good deal there. Four dice mm -hmm. for one saga dice is, is pretty good. Three to four yeah. is what you expect to get from an ability. Um, so it's kind of a extra stipulation there, but that's mm -hmm. fine. And two defense dice, that's okay too if the... Uh, mm -hmm. Your, your unit out on the flank there, guarding everything. You need something, that, that'll do. Yeah, it's a, it's again situational. If you if you have a really good roll and you have a lot of those rares and uncommons, then I'll, I'll use it. But uh, I, I'd prefer to w use steel wall. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's not bad. It's four dice, won't complain. Okay. Do you want to talk about Steel Wall then? Sure. Uh, so your unit cancel hits as if it were in hard cover. If your unit is galvanized, ignore the first uncanceled hit it receives. So this is where you get real, uh, real survivable, I guess. Um, so yeah, so you're 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 rolling your saves on you know fours, which is always nice, mm -hmm. and that first hit. So if you know if you're if you're running. Um, if you're running uh, your your warlord or your uh, your hearth guard, you know they are they're already hitting you on fives. They're not getting many through in the first place. You are saving on a four up, and uh, you're you're oftentimes uh, if you're galvanized, you're going to cancel that hit. So often you won't lose anybody in a combat with your with your best units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean especially if. You've got some fatigue on them. They're hitting you on sixes or something. Mm -hmm. You're probably realistically only going to get one or two through, and mm -hmm. Steel Wall is going to shut that down. And mm -hmm. yeah, holy, holy crap! Yeah, combine that with impenetrable defense <laughs> for for three dice. Yeah, you've got a unit that that's sticking around. Uh, if you need exactly. to hold an objective or something like that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, any any size unit could probably hold off any any other unit with right. a combination of those two. So. Good ability does does use that uncommon in the rare mm -hmm. again. Um, some some boards you know, they might uh might just pay a uh, uncommon for that one. Right. And yeah, you don't I, you don't actually have a lot of common uh, activated abilities on here. That's why no pity isn't all that bad because I mean there's not too much to spend your helmets on. So yeah, uh, as, as I'm going through Dux Ballorum was mm -hmm. can use a single. Uncommon dice, but the other one is going to be close ranks mm -hmm. with uh, exclamation point here. That's the next ability, which is you know they've named a whole uh, fundamental rule after it in the new edition right. here. Close ranks. It's a shooting reaction. Interesting. It's not even melee. It's shooting shooting reaction ability. Unit counts as being in soft cover for the resolution of this unit. If your unit is galvanized, it also gains two defense dice and. It's nice to have a, a shooting reaction ability. I think, I don't know, I think probably most people might go for the cavalry versions of the, mm -hmm. the Warlord, the Hearthguard. I mean, certainly the models that are for sale right. are beautiful, right. mounted right. mounted fellows for the most right. part. So this, uh, if you do have that cavalry having a, a shooting reaction for just that common dice, this is, this is pretty, pretty damn good. Because yeah. you're definitely, you're definitely going to be galvanized. Yeah. So you get a plus one on your defense dice and uh, so that that'd be threes I guess in yeah. shooting and two defense dice so yeah yeah you really for one shooting phase you're definitely gonna be shutting it down oh yeah yeah I yeah whenever I whenever I play against any army that is any any sort of range that mm -hmm. thing yeah you don't you don't usually lose many people when you pop that mm-hmm so oh, awesome ability Mm -hmm. uh, well worth a, a single dice if we're going oh, up yeah. against some shooters. Yeah, if if not, then I guess uh, Duke's Ballorum and No Pity are where <laughs> your, your little exactly. helmets are gone. Uh, right. Uh, as it turns out. So, okay, not too shabby. 
Do you want to finish this out with hold sure. the line there? Hold the line during your opponent's activation phase. All galvanized units, when this ability is used, increase their armor value by one. So this is a this is a very very nice ability. This is a you know again it's it's costly. It, it takes an uncommon or rare, um, but you know if if you're oftentimes I'll take armies of all Hearthguard and they all have armor six. Uh-huh. It's it's kind wow. of brutal. So yeah, and and it's with all the units. So uh, you you can usually get this going so oftentimes you just take this and one other and steel wall and one other ability and you're kind of good to go for that round for all of your units so it's uh i use it quite a bit mm-hmm. okay that makes makes sense now that uh you want everybody to be galvanized <laughs> yeah. uh everybody will get plus one armor which is pretty right. damn huge so yeah great point there with the hearth guard wow that that is scary it does rely on a, a rare dice, but wow, holy crabs, yeah. Um, Which is so another reason why I don't I don't use much cavalry as Hearthguard too, because you can't you can't really use their range uh, in this in this army. Uh, you know, you you have to stick so close to your warlord, you're just kind of a mounted guy <laughs> once, sitting around the backfield. You know, they go, wow, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it's great. So it works against melee and shooting, and yeah, other boards. This might affect just a single unit for a single melee, and they pay two die. I believe on Anglo Danes, there is a two dice ability that gives you plus one armor. And this is every uh, activation, every melee or shooting that they're involved with, and it's going to be a big chunk of your army, uh, potentially your entire army, if you're, you're turtling up there. Uh, Red Beard Baron style. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Awesome. So, yeah, great, great abilities overall. Yeah, I think the the dice management um, is a, is going to be a big aspect of this yeah. one. And where do you sink your? Uh, so you know, impenetrable defense is a, a great melee ability, but mm-hmm. I guess I'd be inclined. You can't ever really count on more than one rare, and, and right. if you are counting on having one rare, um, sometimes that's not a good good plan because they can uh, take a while to show up potentially. Yeah, I'd probably be more inclined for hold the line. Yeah, uh, unless you're unless you're getting your warlord ready to do some molly whopping, you're you're not going to want to use impenetrable defense. Impenetrable defense is really good for getting your your warlord in there and to survive. So I kind of I I'll, I'll use hold the line for most of the battle, and then we'll we'll hit impenetrable defense when I'm going in for the kill with my warlord. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, some great thematic abilities here. So mm-hmm. we talked about you taking the warlord. You like him on foot. You've got the mm-hmm. six pack of hearth guard hanging out next mm-hmm. to them. So that leaves I guess four points, and you mm-hmm. don't take levy. Do you take more? More hearth guard. I mean, you mentioned the all hearth guard build. Uh, is uh-huh. that you know you're more inclined to take that, or just for for fun, or if it depends on the game mode. Or I, you know, if you're uh, if you're playing um, Slay the Warlord, I'll, I'll often go with all hearth guard. But if you're playing another kind of a je- objective based uh, game, you're not going to ha- have the bodies. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll usually go with uh, warriors, unless again, talking about Arthur. On Arthur, yeah, you have to go all all hearth guard, my, and that's when I, and that's when you go all mounted too, and and things get it, it's a completely different way to play. It's it's much much more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, why don't we why don't we talk about Arthur here? Oh yeah, been, he's oh, been I'm mentioned excited. many <laughs> times. I'm excited. Fast forward a few few pages here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Arthur Pendragon. Duke's Britanniarium is uh, my beautiful pronunciation. Arthur's a legendary character, and he generates one more Saga Dice than an ordinary warlord. So in second edition, that's two Saga Dice. Uh, Warband led by Arthur may only include hearth guards. Okay, that makes sense. No no mercenaries. Mm-hmm. Um, he it's interesting. So he doesn't have the companions, but mm-hmm. as long as he is alive, all units in his warband, including himself, are galvanized. And that's essentially that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting difference, I guess. So you'd probably be more inclined to hold Arthur back. But mm-hmm. I, I guess maybe well, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Uh, yeah, wait till you see some of the stuff coming up. <laughs> going through his rules here. Arthur's comrades in arms would gladly lay down their lives to save his. Each Hearthguard figure sacrificed by Arthur's resilience allows him to ignore two unsaved hits. So kind of resilience two precursor. Um, so that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And then he's an amazing warrior. Uh, we said he has aggression 10, but he supposedly has a magic sword. Enemy units may never use Arthur's fatigue to increase their armor. Also, Arthur, okay, he generates 10 instead of yeah. 8 attacks. So that's pretty cool. He's laying down the law, that Arthur. Yeah, so I have Arthur leading. So, uh, you know, you're going to be one unit down. Um, he makes up for the dice. So with, with Arthur, you don't have the dice problem you have with your, your normal unit. and with uh, it, But you're going to be, you're, you're not going to have many bodies. So I, I put Arthur at the front, and I put uh, at least one or two units behind him. And you want to make use of that uh, that resilience roll. Where, that's where you're going to make up the bodies. So you're going to be, at least how I do it, I put Arthur at the front, and I'm just charging everybody with him. And he's kind of like a mini boss. He is really hard to take down. And I want you, I want those wounds to get through because, you know, I can, I, I get double the rate of resilience that you normally get. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that's the way you kind of make up that, that body difference for the taking this hero is you just take him around and, you know, you're dealing out. You're always pretty much reaching that 16 dice combat pool. <laughs> And and you know you have you have tons of people to sacrifice, and so he's he's doing a lot of work. And again, all those abilities we talked about that are good for the warlord are are doubly so for uh, for Arthur. So he is he's vicious, and they're all they're all cavalry. So you can be really aggressive. You have guys all over the board flying around. It's a lot of fr- it's a lot of fun. It's not like the methodical kind of slowly advancing that uh, I play with my other builds. Okay, cool. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, I didn't see. So he has to be mounted. Is that mm-hmm. right or? Okay. Well, I guess. so that that's what I've been kind of confused about this board. So it says on here that, you know, I always take him as cavalry. I haven't mm-hmm. tried him without, but it says, uh, you know, that it's a, a numerous force of uh, cal- cavalry, but not any of the rules. It just says hearthguard. You know, it doesn't say uh, mounted, but, you mm-hmm. know. So I don't know if you could if you could finagle that and take him on foot with uh, – with any uh with foot hearth guard too i don't know mm-hmm. interesting yeah just going through it i don't see a rule specifically mm-hmm. saying that but uh for the the imagery there certainly right charging in and if you want aggressive play style obviously being mounted is going to play into that uh, less right. activations to get there and start right. causing mayhem so that's cool is so it looks like there's another character, Vortigern. Is that right? Yeah. You ever he's, tangle with this fella? He, he's, he's not so good. <laughs> 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 kind of like the historical Vortigern. He's kind of a mess. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, I, uh, yeah, he's he's just not worth taking. I mean, he has some interesting mercenary uh, kind of abilities. I, I played as him once, and I was just not impressed at all. I mean, I felt like the normal units were better than taking sea wolves or whatnot but i guess it's cool kind of thematic thing it, it definitely whereas uh, arthur you kind of feel kind of like you know that you're 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 roman-esque this guy's i guess the more saxon version of the of britain's i, I don't know it's mm-hmm. uh yeah it's, it's so, so he doesn't have companions he, he costs mm-hmm. a point to recruit just like the other guy but so he can hire up to two points or two units of sea wolves uh, they lose the foreigner rule. They generate saga die. Can basically they're a part of the, the army at that point. They can be galvanized by Vortigern. and uh, yeah, I guess um, that's something to point out that all mm-hmm. mercenaries and such uh, cannot be galvanized because uh, yep. he specifically says that they can. So we kind of glossed over that at some point. Mm-hmm. So and then he gets an extra attack and defense dice. For a four more, every unit of four sea wolves with a medium of him. So, yeah, you're not, you're not getting, but you're getting some flexibility, some interesting choices. Yeah. Um, depending on the scenario, because I believe the sea wolves come in from the side of the board, I believe. Mm-hmm. 
So if you're trying to cross a river or something like that, you could just cut out. Yeah, that's true. Cut out that part of the the battler, but really you're just getting some some flexibility versus Arthur. You're paying a point for some really hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> hard uh, uh, abilities they can use to, right. to whoop some ass. Right. So, um, yeah, that's the. That's how the, the legendary characters go uh -huh. in the, the realms of saga there. So, very cool. So, do you, um, when you're getting your games in, are you are you just running these against Age of Vikings, whatever may come? Do you guys stick to your, your periods? Uh, you yeah, we stick to our period. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I love the late Roman stuff. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of, I guess... Uh, bullied my group into just playing that. So yeah, we we uh, we only play against the other Itius and Arthur uh, factions. So uh, and they're all really interesting. So you know this the Britons, their arch nemesis are the Saxons. So okay. uh, the the Saxons have an ability where they get automatic hits. Like uh, I think it's one third of the hits you get on them, they get automatic hits on you. Uh, so you can see there with your hearth guard. You can uh, you can start losing them pretty quick against the Saxons. So I, I, I it's kind of cool playing within the the period. They all kind of are balanced off one another. Whereas I feel I have played a few games against with the Britons against non Itis and Arthur factions, and I don't know. I think the Britons are kind of a little powerful. You know, they they tend to whoop up on the, the some of the original oh, okay. points. <laughs> Interesting. So. Yeah, that's a good point with the Saxons there. So that ability there, in and of itself, just completely ignores hold the line and impenetrable mm -hmm. defense. It doesn't, it doesn't matter in the slightest um, right. that you got spent four dice getting those up. You're still taking just as much damage oh, from, yeah. from that. So uh, cool. Yeah, interesting kind of iconic matchup there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you've got the Britons. I guess, you know, while we have you, I kind of just want to chat at you up a little bit yeah, you're uh definitely. excellent hobby painter oh, uh, thank you terrain is uh, is that kind of your, your forte would you say yeah, yeah it's it's uh i i guess i prefer painting i actually prefer the painting part um but i you know i got tired of having really crappy terrain because you know mm -hmm. i spent all this time painting these beautiful models or, or even my friends too painting beautiful models then we'd be playing on just Nothing, you know, using oh. all <laughs> cut out <laughs> like, with the scissors, <laughs> right? Like beer bottles on the table, and you're like, oh, come on, what's going on with that? So, so I kind of made it a point, like I want to get better at terrain, <clears throat> and I looked on YouTube, and there was, uh, you know, you look at people like the Terrain Tutor or people like mm -hmm. Luke Apps, and like, oh my God, they put out professional looking diorama stuff and I was like where's the stuff for the the schmucks like me that are don't know what they're doing so I thought maybe I'll just try some stuff out some easy tutorials and then just like uh, you know see if see if they might help anyone so that that's kind of where I just got to train it's just because I was really bad at it and I, and I wanted to get a little bit better so Ooh, you know scales. Well, yeah. yeah I mean I I think your stuff like looks amazing and oh, thank you. I don't if 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 the schmucks like you level. I think there needs to be another level below that for schmucks like me, I guess, then. Because when I look at your well, stuff, the, the combination of the... I, I'd love to see just the, your bin of static grass and uh, <laughs> uh, all your clumps and little flowers and everything. Because um, I think the combination of all that is what makes it kind of pop and look right. realistic and um, you know, kind of just uh, r really cool looking stuff and um so how how does it hold up that that stuff to the the rigors of the the battlefield uh it, it holds up uh, uh somewhat not so well <laughs> not gonna you're like oh, 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 oh man watch watch the flowers man <laughs> let me just swap that out <laughs> uh but uh yeah it, it, it depends I'm, I'm trying to get better at uh at uh, making stuff that lasts, you know, I, I do a lot of gaming out of my basement, so I usually doesn't have to, oh, yeah. to travel far. But yeah, uh, what I've started to do is like coating stuff in um, uh, like liquid rubber. Uh, I saw oh, okay. Luke Apps did that, and that and that's helped. But yeah, it, it doesn't always hold up too well, but it looks pretty for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely worth it, and you can always glue those clumps back on right. you know, if, if that becomes right. a deal. Um, yeah, a lot of the natural 
terrain, you know, if stuff pops off or something, it still looks fine, you know, without it versus right. uh, like foam buildings or something getting dings or stuff like that. You can see pink foam coming, th you know, that, right. that that's the worst. But um, yeah, I don't think you'll really have a problem in the long yeah. run with that stuff. So yeah, very cool. So do you just own the Britons or do you have other factions uh, in the, on the shelf there? I, I, so I have all the factions for ITS and Arthur. Uh, so yeah, I got, uh, oh. well, except for Huns. I don't are, got, are these painted? Uh, let's see. That my, would be I, amazing. I, the the Saxons, say. Goths, Romans, and Britons are all painted. Uh, oh, damn. Wow. I, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, my, my cavalry is not quite finished, uh, for, for my goth army, but, uh, I have a foot goth army. Um, and then, yeah, don't have Huns yet, but, uh, maybe that, that'll be in the works. Wow. Cool. So yeah, you must like the Britons the best if you play them the most. I mean, we kind of offered, you could do whatever you wanted. You chose Britons right. here. So yeah, it, it pays me to say that, you know, I'm a, I'm a Latin teacher. So, uh, I, 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 oh. I like nice. my Britons more than my Romans, which feels weird saying. But the Romans are would be my second favorite. I really like playing them too, with their their impetus uh, kind of um, uh, I don't know uh, ability or mm -hmm. I don't know whatever, whatever it's called. Uh, so they're fun, and uh, you know, Goths too have some interesting fatigue things. They're all, I, I really like all the factions in ITS and Arc. They all do. They all play really differently, and they all have really kind of cool mechanics behind them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that that is amazing. I need to get more more factions, more painted stuff. So, yeah, ET and Arthur didn't come out too long. Did you have some historical <laughs> stuff before then? Yeah, okay. so I, I kind of came from uh, you know uh, Warhammer Ancient Battles, and I did some uh, uh, okay. Hail Caesar and To the Strongest. So I was one of those you know historical guys before Saga, and I kind of. When uh, before Saga came out, I was one of those really like just insufferable his historical players that thought you know who wanted realism in his rules mm -hmm. and looked down on all those Warhammer players. <laughs> and then that's why I love Saga so much because it, it showed me like man, this is this is fun. It's thematic. It feels like it's the Dark Ages, it, and, it, and the rules are simple. They're not overly complex like a lot of historical things. So Saga really opened me up to try and like 40k for the first time, Malifaux, that sort of thing. So uh, that's I think why Saga has a special place in my heart. But I but I had all these models, so yeah, it's not all that impressive. Like it's like five years of painting, okay. and I still only painted <laughs> 80 models or something like that. But you know. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Well, I think that's about it. Um, do you ever tangle with uh, the 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 mercenary options in? Atheist and Arthur, they they were kind um, of uh, ahead of their time, where they had all the the mercs in one book, and uh, there right. were more options for for folks to take. Do you do you ever mess around with those in in the Britons at least? Um, not with the Britons. Um, with the with the Romans, I like to throw some uh, some mercenaries in there. It, it can make things kind of interesting, make up for some of their deficits. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're about the only faction I really uh, take mercenaries mercenaries with. The Britons, you, you need that galvanized and and not having it. Is really, you got it. You need yeah, it. You gotta have it. <laughs> so, okay. Cool. Well, I think that's about it for now. All right. I want to thank you for coming on. This has been great. Oh, yeah, it's Hearing, been fun. Uh, how what's it been like talking about the the kind of gaming side side of things versus the the hobby <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Let's say, sorry, say that again. What's it been like talking more about the the gaming aspect of, oh, it's of all the like, hobby? Because you're all about the hobby, it's train, everything. Right. right. Yeah. No. It's I, I I love I love kind of uh, you know mulling around theory crafting like tactics in my head and you know like I I always want to play more. I feel like mm -hmm. I I don't play enough. I I'm I'm always in my like little hobby bunker too much. But you know I. You know, I love I love this kind of getting the nitty gritty about, uh, especially Saga, which has such a cool mechanics. I, I I think I like Saga mechanics more than any other war game. Just the battle wow. board, it's just you know, God, it's great. So Elegant. yeah, I love it. Elegant. <laughs> are you gonna be on this Age of Magic train when it comes out? What are you? Which uh, which camp yeah. are you in there? If if you, from a historical background, um, you, you know, could be. One of those not particularly excited about it, but I'll, I'll let you speak. 
I say bring it on. You know, I, I like it. You know, old me would have would have been, uh, you know, upset. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe. But uh, yeah, I think that this is great. Expand it out. You know, I think that uh, this as Sog was a gateway for me to get into more fantastical rule sets and games. I think this is a great way to get people who might, you know, play 40K or play Age of Sigmar to get them into historicals, you know, they, they, they can just use their pre-existing models they already have, they get to see this really cool mechanic, which, you know, for so many games are just, you know, 40K is not that complex, and, you know, it's just, you know, rolling D, D6s, but the battle board, I think, it's such a cool mechanic that nobody knows about in the wargaming, or at least not enough. And so I think that this might bring those those people into uh, into Saga, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a great gateway for getting all those folks in the door. And once they they see that the the Saga die, you know, for the battle board. Ooh, what, yeah. what is this? Oh, I see right. them. Ooh, interesting symbols. Uh, right. It's gonna gonna get folks hooked, and then you know, once they're on, they're like, hey, check out these Vikings. These are pretty cool. Right, wanna, exactly. Come on over. Like, right. Is it and that's why 44, 44 models for thirty bucks. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. That's seven hundred dollars in Games Workshop terms, you know, <laughs> right? Currency, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I and I th that's why I think Sog doesn't get enough love because you know when you're thinking of forty k tactics or you know, many other war games, like you have, you know your list, you know what it's going to do. And you you can pretty much play out the game in your head before it happens. Saga is like it's like chess. You have to have like a backup plan and a backup plan for what you're going to yes. do every round. So you know, I, it, more people need to experience the wonder of Saga. That's what Absolutely. I'm saying. Absolutely, <laughs> spread the word. So yeah. awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on. If no folks problem. Uh, haven't checked out the Red Beard Baron channel. It's got a lot of natural kind of terrain tutorials, and you can see uh, little bits and pieces of your lovely models sprinkled in throughout there. And you do kind of have some hobby progress stuff. Uh, I know some 40K stuff on there, as, as well as other things. So, um, yeah, it's a great channel. You do a great job, and people should, should check it out if they want to delve into the hobby side of uh, our Saga gameplay here. So. Uh, hopefully we can have you on uh, again at some future Definitely. point. Maybe talk terrain a little bit more or something, something like that. That'd be kind of yeah, cool. Be great. Get the old wheels turning here and in, in, <laughs> in my brain here. Figure that out. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Have, have All right. One. Thank you Thank so you much, much, Raj. All right. Bye bye. Saga. <laughs>